Joan of Arc was born to a peasant family in the year 1412 in Domremy la Pucelle, France. She was born a farm girl and a maid and performed the name Jehan de Pucelle, meaning Joan the Maid. She did not receive the name Joan of Arc till she went into war. Her devoutly religious parents, Jacques de Arc and Isabel Romy, lived on 50 acres of land in a reclusive area of eastern France. She was surrounded by Burgundian property, but her family remained loyal to the French crown. At the young age of 13, Joan saw visions from Archangel Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret, who instructed her to become a commander of the French army to defeat the British and escort the Dauphin to Reims for his coronation. They demanded her to cut her hair and dress as a man. Astounded by the beauty of the visions, Joan wept profusely. At the time, the Dauphin, Charles VII, and Henry VI were in dispute. It had been five years since the death of the Dauphin's father, and he was yet to have been appointed King of France. Joan of Arc had a very difficult task at hand. The British were occupying a majority of the northern part of the kingdom with the Burgundians as allies. People in her village were already abandoning their homes. Joan, 16 years old, left her family in May of 1428 on a journey to Vaucouleurs to ask the Dauphin permission to join his mission. When asked why she left her family to go on this long journey, she responded with, Since God had commanded it, it was necessary that I do it. Since God commanded it, even if I had a hundred fathers and mothers, even if I had been a king's daughter, I would have gone nevertheless. King Charles VII granted Joan's wish by appointing her as commander of the French army. Her plan was to change the tide of the war with a more aggressive and courageous approach, rather than the cautious approach taken by the commanders before her. At the Battle of Orleans, she carried a banner with the name of Jesus for a symbol of hope, faith, and courage. She also bore a sword, but refused to kill another man with it. She stood in the battlefield as an inspirational mascot for the French. May 4th, Joan led the French army into the capture of the fortress of St. Luc. The very next day, she led another capture of the fortress Saint Jean Le Blanc. Most of all, she fought to relieve diplomatic struggles between France and Great Britain. Joan demanded her position as offense to be held when she stood in front of the war camp. The war council refused her request and locked the city gates. Joan gathered soldiers and townsmen to unbolt the gate. Suddenly, she was wounded by an arrow. You'll bleed to death. Break it off. Joan, one can't do it. I down on this. Easy, easy. 
Easy. Easy. Easy. Now. My horse. My banner. The victory at the Battle of Orleans was a great victory for the French, and it made the army reconsider their tentative approach to the war. Joan hurriedly brought Charles to Reims to be crowned with a military escort. He was finally appointed the King of France on July 17th. Joan later led a siege of Paris, which previously served as an English base. In this battle, she was wounded in the lake from a crossbow arrow. She later received a royal withdrawal that next morning. May 9, 1413, Joan of Arc was captured by Bulgarians who paid the King Charles a well-desirable price and taken to the Donjon Tower in the Castle of Rowan. She was summoned to be tried tortured and executed. When Joan saw torture chambers and what would happen to her in the near future, she cried out, Truly, if you were to tear me from limb to limb and separate my soul from my body, I would not say anything more. If I did say anything, afterwards I would always declare that you made me say it by force. I'm going to burn the witch! Brother, what's happened? She has recanted. They will execute her at once. On May 30th, 1432, in a French town called Rouen, the 19-year-old Joan of Arc was burnt at the stake. The Duke of Bedford, the main English leader, bargained with the Church of England to put Joan of Arc on trial for heresy in order to escape the ridicule of people of England and France for her murder and instead blame it on the Church. In actuality, her death was for military and political gain of the English. later she is announced as an inspirational figure for her courage in history because she is the only woman to ride into battle dressed as a man commanding the entire French army. On May 16, 1920, the church officially made Joan of Arc a saint at a ceremony in the Vatican in Rome. She is well known for her loyalty. She kept true to King Charles even though he was rude, disrespectful, ungrateful, and ended up betraying her by giving her to the enemy. Joan was betrayed by the church, but Joan never doubted her faith and forgave the English church for its cruelty. Joan of Arc was an example of patriotism because she loved her country so much that she was willing to go into battle and die for the sake of her fellow people. She was courageous, loyal, loving, and faithful in every sense. Joan of Arc responded to God's command willfully and promptly. By doing this, she completely turned the tide of a very important war and changed history all before her 18th birthday. Her story is filled with life lessons and examples of leadership, loyalty, and faith. Joan of Arc lives on to be a truly inspirational character in history. <laughs> 